So I hate it when this happens. I did the cover and I didn't hit record. I'm so frustrated by that, but I'm gonna let you know what I did. So normally I do um, a 16th inch border. In this case, I'm doing an eighth inch border. So this is four, I'm sorry, eight and a quarter. And then I trimmed it to fit after I put on this wrap. This wrap was eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. I came across and put two inches on the front and then just wrapped the rest. These pieces were trimmed to fit after I applied the, the, um, the spine piece. Now, as I've gone over in previous videos, when you're applying a wrap, you, you can't do it fully open or fully closed. It has to be somewhere in between. So I do it at about 45 degree angle and I started on the front and then came around to the back. Once that was done, I laid in this sheet and trimmed it to fit. I wanted a wider black border here to go with the fact that I've got a wider border all the way around. I did the same thing here, brought my designer paper in and trimmed it to fit based on this. And I apologize, I didn't record that. I'm sorry, um, I thought I'd hit the button. Okay, so this is Fussy Cut from the 12 by 12 Tortoise and the Hare collection pack. I did not use it on the internal page, so I saved it. And then this image is from the ant and the grasshopper. And it is also from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And I didn't use this image inside on that page. So I saved it, cardstock backed it, and we're gonna use it on the cover because I just think it's gorgeous. And I like these swirls. And it was hard to accommodate some of these swirls on the inside of the book. And when you see it, you'll understand. <clears throat> okay, this is from the signature page, and I just fussy cut it out, put it on black cardstock, and it's gonna go and rest right here. Now this piece, I think I am gonna back with some chipboard to get some dimension behind it. So let me find some chipboard. Here we go. This is just a piece of spare chipboard that I had laying around. <clears throat> I just kind of hold it in place and figure it out. Just need to knock a little corner off here and here. We're good to go. Maybe a little more right here. Okay, be set. I might add some flowers to the cover, but I'm not sure. I'm so far behind on getting this out. I think I'm just gonna let it go as is. And, and then maybe um, if I further embellish the front, I might release just some bonus uh, material to show you uh, some other options for the cover. Okay, I'm so far behind schedule, I even got an email today saying, where are you? <laughs> okay, and that's because I had to learn a whole lot to put this one together, I, and I really enjoyed it. It was, um, it was fun, but a little stressful to do something so different. Okay, so that's gonna be basically our cover. Now for the back side, this is, I just love this image. This is one of the cut aparts. And I can't remember if it's from the 12 by 12 or the A4. It's one of the two. I think it's the 12 by 12 just based on the scale. I am going to just put this guy right here because it's so gorgeous. So I need to ink it. And then once I ink it, I'm going to make a decision about whether or not I'm going to put some black cardstock and fussy cut or just lay it down as is. Okay, the next time we get together, uh, which is still going to be part of this video, I'm going to um, do the inside liners and we're going to install our pages. So we're almost done. Okay, I've decided I inked my edges and I think that looks good enough. And like I said, I'm really pressed for time because I'm so far behind on projects. I'm gonna go ahead and lay it down. But if, if you like the way the um, black makes things pop, go ahead and do that, but I'm okay with this. So we're gonna go ahead and lay this down on the back and then the back will be done. We'll work on the inside. And then I'm off to work on, uh, what is it? Um, 
Japan, Vagabond. Okay, I, I want it to come across... Um, I'm just using this as kind of a guide to, to find a consistent line to go across. There we go. Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love this image. There we go. Ta-da! Okay, now we're going to work on the inside liners. Okay, everyone, let's go ahead and finish the inside of Aesop's Fables. So I've got my papers lined up. <laughs> I think this is from the A4 pack. It's definitely not the 8x8. It's either A4 or the 12x12. 12 12. And what is this? This is from the 12x12 12 12 collection pack. Um... We're going to have two pockets, um, so go ahead and make both at the same time. This is nine and three eighths inch across and four and three quarters tall. You're going to score a half inch on three sides to make a nice pocket. And you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go ahead and lay this in first. And that way I can see how high up. No. Nope, that's good. Okay. So I'm coming in just a little bit from the spine here. And I think see it's not it's not an eighth of an inch it's a little more than a sixteenth maybe three sixteenths or two sixteenths I don't know it's a little more a little less than an eighth of an inch and I had to get a little picky about this because of the size of paper I had left so it needed to be a little bit smaller than I would have made it otherwise and I think I mentioned that also on the cover. That uh, we need to, there we go. That the cover is. Okay, I'm going to start over. That didn't go in the way I wanted it to. Okay, I need to turn off my desk fan. It's drying my glue too fast. I don't have any time to wiggle. Let's do that again. All right. And it helps to have um, a contrast sheet so you can see the, the border. Oh, whoops. I was going to do that backwards anyways. That goes on top. This goes on the bottom. <laughs> I'm a mess, you guys. I'm sorry. It's getting late. This goes on the bottom. Go ahead and add this so I can see the edge of my pocket. Yeah, that's right. There we go. I thought, oh, that other paper seems a little too big, and it's supposed to be a little bit bigger so that it slides into the pocket. So now, now we can go ahead and put this into the pocket. And really doesn't matter which way you choose. It's pretty universal. It looks a little bit more like the leaves are going up in this direction. Sounds crunchy. Okay. Now, I don't always do this, but I did put a panel here because I wanted everything to be on the same plane since I knew we were putting a pocket in. I don't want um, anything to get hung up on this piece down here. Um, and now that it's all on one plane, it should go in pretty easily. Again, this is nine and three eighths by four and three quarters.
There we go. That's in. Okay. Edges are inked. I'll leave about a quarter inch on my leading edge dry. Makes it easy to slip it in the pocket, back it back, back it off to get it right where you want it without leaving a trail of glue. <laughs> and easier said than done. There we go, and there's one side. And then our last piece goes here. Now, after I finished the album, I did have some cut apart cards left, which is one of the reasons why I'm putting pockets here um, because um, I want I don't want those to go to waste. So. I'm not going to cardstock back them, but I'm going to trim them out and put them in the pocket. And um, then you just have that extra, those extra bits as you're decorating. And then also there's a lot more cut aparts left that I'll trim into rectangular shapes that can be fussy cut later if you decide to lay in photographs. So I'll show you those two items on the walkthrough, but now our inside liners are done. So it is time at long last to lay in our pages. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure our pages are in order. This is page one. Now when I put page one together, the tutorial, I did not add this, I had forgotten. So I went ahead and added that. Here's page two, page three. I may have added that too. I might've done it on the tutorial, I don't recall. Oops. Page four, I added this um, outside of the tutorial. Page five, and then there's our little story. Here's the part A, here's part B. So that's page four, five. Page six, got the ant and the grasshopper, this nice big pocket. Page seven, which we've got this dimensional um, page, which I love. And then uh, page eight, and then we've got, you know, we've got these motion uh, pieces going up and down uh, from the top and from the bottom. This was also left over from um, this 12 by 12 collection pack. So there was the story, next to the story was this. And so I'm just gonna leave this in here because at some point I might wanna use it. And I'll talk about that a little bit more during the walkthrough. So that's it, let's go ahead and get started because they are in order. Okay, I'm gonna lay my hinges down to one side. We are gonna use our pick tool here. So let me get that ready. Do a little housekeeping. Get my glue cap on and then we'll just lay these pages in and we'll be done. The next thing, next time we're together, I'll just be doing the walkthrough and we'll be talking about the um, page by page, what the elements are. And um, yeah. There we go. We had some weird weather today. So uh, you're not necessarily gonna watch it in the order that I recorded it, but today, if you're watching the construction of page one and page eight, we had this really big thunderstorm and that's pretty unusual for us. We don't usually get that here in San Diego. Uh, in the, in a, the mountains, not far from here, but not right here in town. So that was kind of fun. And there was a couple of really loud claps during the video. So hopefully, it's not too annoying. I tried to knock out as much of the sound as I could in the editing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead um, and do this one, and then I'm going to do the rest offline. So once you get one in, you know what the deal is. So I'm just pushing uh, the hinge down because it's wanting to jump up and grab the page before I'm ready. That looks good. 
Oh, it looks pretty good. Oh, nope, it's not. It slipped back out. Okay, I'm struggling a little, sorry. It's tough because it's confusing which part is the hinge and which part is the page. I'm going to use my flat spatula. It's much more forgiving. Lift this back up. If you don't have a lot of confidence doing this, I completely understand. The, the more often you do it, the better you get. But apparently I let it slip uh, before I was ready. And um, now I'm, I'm paying the price. Um, but if you if you don't feel confident, then put glue on your hinge, and it'll allow you to maneuver it before you make a commitment. That's the good news. The bad news is, okay, now it's wiggled back into place. This is a lifesaver. It is really thin, and it's a palette knife for painting. That is where that came from. Okay, that's in place now. Um, the bad news is if you use the glue, even though it helps you wiggle things into place, um, you can't undo it. If it's just tape and you make a mistake, you can use this product called Undo and you put it over and it'll go through your designer paper down to the tape level and release the adhesive, but only for tape, not for glue. So I do my best to avoid glue here because I have made mistakes where I've had to undo my page and reposition it. And what, what, what might happen? Well, I've put pages in upside down, for example. <laughs> and um, you don't want to chuck your cover and your hinge because of it. You just want to put some undo here, release it, and then reposition your page. And this undo stuff is like a miracle. The only caution is be patient, put it on, give it some time to do its magic. Don't immediately try to remove the paper. Um, but you'll be really pleased with the results. It's amazing. And then once everything is completely dry, you can't even tell it was there. You don't see it and you can reapply tape. Okay. I'm just trying to open this so it'll slide over the hinge. Okay, And I'm doing a second one because I made such a mess of the first one. <laughs> I'd like to demonstrate that this is really not difficult. <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to happen today. There we go. Okay. So that's in place. We're going to reach in, grab our tape. Try to hold it in place while we're grabbing the tape. So that's the way it should work for most of them. I'm going to go ahead and do the last two offline. And the next time we get together, we'll be doing the walkthrough. Thanks, everyone.